simply put, a warehouse is a pretty large building used to store material, components, and finished goods until they are needed. Pretty straightforward definition, for sure, but perhaps not so straightforward when we consider how important warehouses are for business success. A warehouse differs from a distribution center in that they store stuff in warehouses before we are ready to distribute those items, wherever they may be. Certainly a small business can use the same building for both storing and distributing, and many small businesses do so. For our purposes though, let's consider a warehouse as a separate entity. Certainly warehouses are expensive to build and expensive to operate, so we have to consider four distinct trade-offs among different aspects of business before making decisions about how many warehouses we need and where they should be located. Can you operate with no warehouses at all? Certainly you can. Of course, your transportation costs will be considerably high because you'll have to store all the products in the factory and then ship to individual customer as orders are placed. Likewise, with materials coming into the factory from your suppliers, with warehouses in the right places, you're able to move material and products in large quantities from the factory and save on shipping costs. Goods can be sent by rail and in through truckloads. Of course, you can have too many warehouses also. Then your transportation costs will increase because you are now moving everything by truck, require more trucks to deliver to more warehouses spread across the country. And many of those trucks will only be partially full, thus increasing your operating costs. There's also a trade-off between number of warehouses and the amount of inventory that have to be kept. In general, the more warehouses you have, the higher your inventory levels will be. Many companies will segregate their inventory needs into distinct warehouse operations. For example, I might provide a regional warehouses with materials and finished goods that make up the bulk of my business, those items that move on a regular and steady basis. But for the low velocity items, like specialty products and the materials to make them, I might have to do just one domestic warehouse. The savings on inventory carrying costs often outweigh the additional transportation expenses. This is certainly a calculation you want to make for yourself and your products. Customer service is another consideration for my warehousing decisions. More warehouses provide better service to your factories and to your customers because they're going to be holding inventory closer to the people who need it. As most of us realize, 100% service levels are often not just affordable, we have to balance our service goals with the cost of building and operating the network of warehouses. Our last trade-off consideration here is within the warehouse itself, the size, the equipment, and the people. The larger the facility, the more equipment will be in it, and the more people will be required to operate it. Now robotics and automated handling equipment can certainly change that people ratio. Based upon your service level requirements and goals, you must build, equip, and staff the right sized warehouse. The key to warehouse management is to find the right balance among these factors. You must design a network of the right sized warehouses in the right locations to provide the needed service levels but holding costs holding down your inventory costs. Certainly this is not an easy assignment. So where do you begin? Analyzing your entire warehousing system at once may be too daunting a task, but looking at warehousing requirements for one major product might uncover some opportunities for improvement within your logistics system. And simply walking around a warehouse with a question why on your mind could yield some interesting results also. Try it for yourself.